So today I'll share with you some background on Food Recovery Network, how we got started and how we operate, and I'll delve into tips and tricks our students use when starting their own food recovery programs, including suggestions for finding a hunger fighting partner agency and encouraging food businesses to donate their surplus food, um, as well as ideas for finding committed volunteers to carry out these food recoveries. Um, so what is Food Recovery Network? FRN is a national nonprofit that works with college students in the United States to recover surplus food from their campuses and surrounding communities and donate it to local hunger fighting agencies. FRN got its start as a student organization at the University of Maryland during the fall of the 2011 semester, um, and it grew over two years to 23 schools under entirely student-led efforts. During the summer of 2013, FRN brought on a team of full-time staff, and during last school year, we started food recovery programs at over 70 campuses. So getting food recovery programs up and running is easy. Um, we now have chapters at over 100 campuses in 31 states that have recovered over half a million pounds of food in the past three years. And we're on track to be at 150 colleges and universities and to have recovered over 610,000 pounds of food by May of 2015. So what do students have to do to start a food recovery network chapter? And also just keep in mind that a lot of these steps are really easily transferable to non-students looking to start community food recovery programs. Um, once student leaders apply to start a chapter on our website, our new chapter coordinators based here um, in our national office in College Park, Maryland, work with them one-on-one -on -one to recruit volunteers um, to train them on food safety protocols, which our University of Rochester chapter is demonstrating um, includes wearing hairnets very stylishly. Um, and as Claire mentioned, BAMCO helped us to uh, develop those protocols. So thanks to them for that. Um, our team works with you to uh, work with dining services to develop a recovery protocol and we'll help you find a hunger fighting partner agency in your community. Um, we also help you figure out a way to get there, including by bicycle like Stephanie on the last slide. Um, or by car or walking. And once you begin recovering, we'll support you with any supplies that you need and connect you virtually and in person to other FRN chapters to share your best practices and experience. So we're truly building a food recovery movement. Um, one of the first hurdles that students usually face in developing their FRN chapter is getting a dedicated team together, making sure that they have the support of several committed individuals to assist in the initial logistics. And then once the recoveries are up and running, making sure that there will be many sets of teams at the ready to pick up food that needs to be recovered. So we recommend that students work with existing clubs on campus that are predisposed to support the positive impacts of food recovery, um, for instance, with social justice or community service or environmental organizations. And generally, in your community, you should be able to find groups like these to connect with. And in terms of getting in touch with them, emailing the group leaders is a good way to build an initial relationship. But if you're really looking for committed volunteers, it's best if you attend one or two of the group's meetings and make your pitch in person. That way you can get their contact information and answer any questions that people have. Um, and especially if you're in one of the 103 communities where we already have FRN chapters, please get in touch with them. College students are um, trusty volunteers, and that goes especially for FRN students. Um, so the next step is finding hunger fighting partner agencies in your community. Um, it's completely fine to go ahead and gather information from various agencies before you have any committed food donors. Um, some pieces of information that you'll want to gather from these agencies are the hours that they're open, when exactly you might be able to deliver the food to them. You'll want to know their capacity to store and serve or redistribute the food you recovered to them. Um, for instance, how much food and what types of food will be most valuable for them, and is that a good match for where you might be recovering food from? Because ultimately, if you're trying to prevent food from ending up in the landfill, you want to make sure that they're uh, on the same page as you are about what they can expect from a typical recovery. Um, and finally, you might want to consider the needs of your community, which populations are experiencing food insecurity at the highest rates, and does the partner agency serve those folks? Um, one last thing to think about, not necessarily related to food recovery, is the skill set and capacity of your volunteer base. So if they're able to help your partner agency in other ways. Um, for example, we've got this team here, our FRN chapter at Belmont Abbey College in North Carolina. They help serve meals at their partner agency every week, regardless of if they recovered and donated any food that week or not. So college students with extra time are serving the needs of their community. Um, finally, 
getting dining or some other food service provider on board. FRN encourages our students, um, much as Claire mentioned, to have all of their ducks in a row before talking to dining or other potential food donors. So the more information that they come prepared with and the better able they are to answer dining's questions, um, the more likely it is that dining will say yes. So go into your meeting able to let the potential food donor know that you've got plenty of committed volunteers and a hunger fighting agency ready to accept the food. Um, and it's also helpful to put your ask into context. So talk about the paradox of hunger and food waste in America and even localize and personalize the issues to your city or county. Um, you might want to draft a protocol to estimate how long you'll be in the kitchen, any equipment of theirs that you might need to use, um, but be flexible, as Claire mentioned. For instance, if the chefs prefer to package the food for you, that's totally fine. Um, consider also take, talking up the benefits to the food businesses for donating, um, good publicity, helping the community, tax benefits, and it's always good to remind people of the tangible rewards of doing good things. Um, so that's about it for me. As I said, starting a food re recovery program is easy. Um, keep in touch with us at Food Recovery on Twitter and Instagram, on Facebook as Food Recovery Network, and online at foodrecoverynetwork.org, um, which is also where any interested college students can apply to start a chapter. And if you're a food business that's already donating your surplus food, get Food Recovery Certified. Um, you can find out more about that at foodrecoverycertified.org. Thank you.